Hey y'all, it's Bailey and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to take a trip down memory lane and talk about some OG beauty guru like holy grail products that were so big back in the day and what are some products that I'm still using today. Now, um, a little bit of history about me. I have been doing YouTube since my sophomore year of college. So I think I technically started like the very beginning of 2013, I believe. I've been watching since I was in high school. I want to say like my senior year, junior or senior year of high school is when I started watching people. The first person I ever saw was um, Juicy Sorrow 7 and like her sister. And who else did I watch back in the day? Um, like Ingrid Nielsen, back when she was still Miss Glamorazzi, um, Tati, obviously. All the OG beauty people, like I was all about it. And if they were talking about it, I needed to have it. And I noticed in my collection that there's still some products that were like the thing to have way back in the day that I still use and love in 2018 almost 2019 and I thought it'd be kind of fun to share with you guys what I've been loving now not all of these products were like big back in like 2011 obviously but like that 2011 to 20 maybe 14 that's when these were like in the sweet spot you know so I just thought it'd be a fun video and hopefully you guys can relate um but yeah I guess that's everything, and let's get into my products. Um, before we hop into the little demonstration, I also want y'all to know I'm going to be doing a Q&A soon. I'm trying to like pre-film for when I go home for Christmas, so I want to do a little Q&A. And if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments down below. Awesome. Okay, so the first product that I have to talk about, and it's kind of cheating a little bit because this is like the updated version of the OG version, but you'll see what I mean. Um, it is NARS Laguna Bronzer. So this one is the sun wash version, which means it gives your skin more of like a blurred effect. Do I notice that? Not necessarily. Like, I think it's all basically the same. But regardless, NARS Laguna Bronzer is still totally where it's at. I remember, who was it? Lauren Elizabeth, was that her name? I don't remember what her original, like, YouTube title was because, you know, back then, nobody actually used their, like, normal name. They had, like, Juicy Star 07 or something. Um, but I remember she talked about this all the time, along with, like, every other beauty girl. And I totally had this. I want to say, did I have it in high school or was it in college? I don't remember. But I know I've gone through a full one of these and then I've, re not recently, I've had this one for a little bit, clearly. Um, but it's what I've been using every single day recently. And it is truly such a good bronzer. Again, used it today. And it's just a really good tone for me. Now, between this one and their original formula of, of Laguna. I think I like this one better just because it is a little bit smoother and does have that like blurring quality and I feel like you can't really go overboard with it. I mean you can dig your brush in here as much as you want and it's not going to pick up too much product so it's very user friendly but if you're looking for a good bronzer this one definitely has stood the test of time like tone wise um, and I think it's awesome still so Nars Laguna you will always probably be in my collection let's be honest. Moving on, let's talk about a couple foundation products. First things first, we have to talk about the original Bare Minerals Foundation. I was actually recently sent the full color range, which was super, super wild and crazy. So I was able to, you know, break it out again. And I forgot how much I like this because it's so easy, but it makes your skin look so, so good. Even if you have dry skin like me, it still totally works. Um, I remember, oh my God, I remember getting ready for high school because, you know, you cared back in the day, right? So you get up really, really early and like put yourself together. And the only thing on TV would be like infomercials or the news. So I would watch infomercials because back in the day, you know, we didn't have like your own little laptop that you could use, right? Or like your iPad or your iPhone where you can just like watch YouTube videos. And back in the day, they didn't even have like casual YouTube videos to watch. They're all just like weird, you know what I mean? Y'all remember. So all I'd watch would be infomercials in the morning. And I remember there was like the Nutribullet and then there was like this one. And I remember it's like, oh, you could sleep in your makeup because it's mineral makeup and it's not gonna break you out. And I remember I wanted this so bad. My mom and I both ended up with the like little starter kit. And this was like my foundation of choice back in the day. This might've been even when I was in middle school. Did I use this in middle school? I don't know. Um, but this was like such an OG product. I feel like everybody's used it before. And I mean, I still use it. I still really like it it's good stuff and then the other product is something I have recently refallen in love with and it is the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer this one's the oil free version um, but they also have one that's not oil free and I want to say it was Juicy Star 07 who loved this tinted moisturizer or maybe it was Ingrid 
or maybe it was both. I don't know. But I just remember this was like the tinted moisturizer to have. And I have a vivid memory of picking up the travel size version because it was, you know, a lot less in price. And being like, ooh, this is like the good stuff. Even though back in the day I needed a little bit more coverage, but like whatever. Um, yeah, this was definitely something that has stood the test of time. This is like a true OG product. This has truly been like my go-to for work lately. And it's good stuff. Okay, this isn't like super OG beauty YouTuber. But I will say this is probably one of the first highlighters that really hit it big right when highlighting started to like become a thing and that is Mary Luminizer from The Balm and this is what it looks like. It is such a good just simple highlighter. It's definitely more of like a warm champagne. It doesn't have too much gold in it but there's definitely some gold and you're able to use this as an eyeshadow or a highlighter and it is really 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 good. I'll do a swatch so you guys can see look at how pretty and reflective it was this one and I want to say soft and gentle from Mac that everybody has which funny enough I don't think I've ever owned soft and gentle uh, but this one definitely it was always very popular they have more colors of this now which is super cool but uh, yeah this is definitely an OG and it's really really good okay we just have to talk about the Urban Decay 24 hour glide on pencils these were like the eyeliner to use back in the day pretty sure just about everybody and their mama used them ironically I don't have a black one at the moment but I have all these other colors and they are all really 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 good I remember me and my cousin were obsessed with using colorful liner just add like a pop color and you know be cool with your makeup and we had these and then we also had the Stila ones that were um, a mechanical one so you didn't have to sharpen like with these I unfortunately don't have any of the Stila ones at the moment um, but I remember that was like the look we always went for especially if we had like a green or a purple or like this copper oh my god we would have loved the copper so this just brings me back down memory lane and they are really good and they have seriously like every color you could possibly imagine so check them out they're awesome do y'all remember how big this mascara primer from Lancome was back in the day I mean even today it's still like a cult favorite but I just remember this was like the lash primer right this is what it looks like it is just a white mascara essentially and it adds a little bit of length and then you put on your normal mascara on top of it and just makes your lashes look all that much longer it definitely works it's definitely very very good but I feel like these days the drugstore also has like mascara primers that work just as good the one that I can think of that I actually have it's back there it's the one from L'Oreal and it's just like part of their carbon black line but it's I'll, I'll show you this is it. It is just their voluminous primer and really they are pretty dang similar the brushes are kind of a little different but it definitely gives the same effect. So if you've been wanting to try the Lancome one because you know it's a cult favorite, maybe test out the L'Oreal one first just to make sure you like it um, and that you would actually use it. But this was definitely a hyped up product back in the day. It's still a hyped up product today and it is good stuff, truly. Okay, y'all remember when ABH came out with their contour kit? That like broke the beauty world, truly, because it was like the first contour kit they can get at Sephora or something, as far as I knew. And clearly I still kind of have mine. I've ended up depotting it and just putting the colors that I use on a more regular basis in a little Z palette. And this is shade I use for contour. I think it's in the shade Fawn. Yes, it's in the shade Fawn. Um, and then I also like to use the highlighter, which is in the shade Sand sometimes. Oh, and do you guys remember the banana powder? It's literally just called Banana. That was such a big thing to set your under eyes, even though it never really looked that great on me, I'll be honest, because I think I'm too fair for it, but I still did it anyways. Um, but this was like the contour kit to have. I feel like it was sold out all the time, and it was such like a big deal. It was like kind of, I don't want to say revolutionary, because I'm sure they had contour kits before then, but it was the first one that made it like super, super mainstream. But anyways, this was definitely something hyped up and huge, and I still use it, use it today. It's good stuff. Okay, I can't do a throwback video without talking about MAC, because... Back in the day, back in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2010 probably too, MAC was the brand to have. Like everybody was going out to get the collections, doing reviews. That was when like the Hello Kitty collection was big. Y'all remember that? That was big stuff. I think Barbie had a collection with them too, also big. And I just have a few MAC items I still have. I'm not super into MAC anymore, but I will say some of their products are still very good. So I have a lipstick that I'm pretty sure was like hyped up a little bit later. I want to say this was like the Kylie Jenner lipstick when she started getting her lip fillers. And this 
Kisses and Brave. So this is what it looks like. I'll do a swatch for you guys. It is a really pretty lipstick. It's kind of like a warm rose and it's good for every day. It still has that really good like vanilla scent. So that's nice. I'm trying to think of other MAC lipsticks that were super big back in the day. I know I used to have syrup and I loved it. My mom also liked it. And I want to say that there was something, oh my god, the Dazzle glasses. Y'all remember the Dazzle glasses? I think I only had one that was like a holiday set. Those were like too much for me, but Dazzle glasses were really big. Also, we got to talk about the eyeshadows. I currently just have two. I have the shade Swiss Chocolate, which was like a super popular brown and then also brown down which is more of like a cool tone brown but I remember I had so 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 many single MAC shadows and I would get the empty palettes and I would just depot these it was like my little DIY I would I don't know if my mom knew I did this in my bedroom but confession this is what I did mom I would pop this out of the little container and then I'd hold it with some tweezers over a flame until it melted and then I'd be able to push the pan out and then I would just pop it into my little palette. I mean I didn't burn the house down so we were all good but I remember I had so many of these where I had like all that glitters and saddle. I had like cranberry. I was really happy with cranberry. What else did I have? I just had a ton. I feel like I need to go to MAC and just get all these singles again because they were so good. Ah, throwback. So obviously MAC shadows were like the thing and then this MAC blush was like the color to have. I talked about it briefly on my channel before because I've recently re-picked it up and it is their cream blush and lady blush. This has been what I like to use on like true tone makeup days. Just add a little bit of colors to the back of my cheeks and this is very 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 nice. I'll do a little swatchy swatch for you guys so y'all can see. It looks like this. I don't know, it's just like really soft, kind of like a dusty peachy pink. And I like the finish because it dries down and not like super sticky, like a lot. And I like the finish because when it dries down, it feels not totally like a powder, but it's not sticky like a cream blush typically is. And it definitely sets in place, which is good. But I remember this was like the color to have. I definitely had it back in the day, but it being a cream product, it dried out pretty quickly. So, so I couldn't hold on to it as long as I could a normal traditional powder blush, but it's still a really, really good color and it's perfect for those no makeup makeup looks. Okay, and the last product I have is something I don't use on a regular basis, but I like to keep it in my collection for those days where I'm looking to use a lip liner and I need that extra security. And it's the Rebel London Exaggerate Lip Liner in the shade East End Snob. I remember everybody talked about this because it was like $4 at the drugstore and it worked beautifully the color was awesome and it truly is all of the above so it's a mechanical pencil which is awesome and this is the color that's a good swatch good job Bailey um, it actually would work pretty well under brave because it is a little bit deeper and would be able to add like a nice little depth to it but it is such a good lip liner I probably had a ton of these too because they are super affordable and they work very very well if you're at the drugstore looking for a lip liner I mean check these out but this color specifically was like the color to have as you can see because it's just like a basic pink and I remember I did really love it I used it all the time um and the price was right so good stuff all right y'all so that is everything for this throwback beauty video I hope you guys liked it let me know in the comments down below what's something in your collection that you still use on a regular basis that you've used since like the beginning of YouTube beauty gurus I would love to know and let me know if there's something I'm forgetting like I know there's a MAC eyeshadow that was like such a staple but I can't think of it for the life of me so let me know in the comments um, but that is everything for today and I will see you guys next time